alternating current or AC. If we have a wire where we have DC, it just means that the electrons are flowing nice and steady in one direction. That's direct current. But if you have AC alternating current, the electrons are wiggling back and forth. So for a battery that's supplying DC, the electrons will go from one end all the way back around to the other end. AC is what we get out of a generator or a dynamo, and the electrons don't actually go around the circuit. They just wiggle, they oscillate, and they pass on those oscillations to the electrons next door all the way around. What does this look like on a graph? We have a positive voltage and a negative voltage, and we have a sine wave. For UK mains, this is 50 hertz, so one complete wave 50 times a second. Now, that's not very useful if we want to charge our batteries because we need DC from that, so we need to convert it into DC. We need the electrons to flow all in one direction. What we can do is get a diode. This lets the electrons flow one way, but not the other. So when we do this, when we pass our AC through this, we actually get the electrons flowing one way, but if they go the other way, they're actually stopped. So we actually just get this lumpy DC and that carries on like so. Problem with that is that we get half of the energy lost in the diode, so that's not very useful, but it is easy. This is called half wave rectification. Better way of doing it is full wave rectification. Now you can accomplish this if you've got a dynamo by putting a split ring commutator on. So you're flipping the current every half a turn so you end up with the electrons flowing in the same direction. But what we can do is instead have a bridge circuit of diodes. Bridge circuit is a very clever setup of four diodes in a diamond to make sure no matter which way the AC comes in, it always goes out in the same direction. And what we end up with is all of our lumps being put on the top there. So the electrons are going like this, whoop, 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 but they are moving in the same direction. So we have lumpy DC. You can smooth this out using capacitors. Just very quickly, the way that a diode works, it's a tail of two halves. What we have, what we have is a negative part to our diode and a positive part to our diode. The negative part has electrons in and the positive part has holes where electrons can fill. What do they do? The electrons can jump from one side to the other, but they cannot jump the other way. So electrons come in, they fill up the negative part and they jump over to the positive part where they should be in those holes, and then they go off to the rest of the circuit. Electrons cannot come into here and jump the gap to the negative side. Now, when we have an AC trace, It's very difficult to use Ohm's law in this situation because we have a positive voltage and we have a negative voltage. If we average the voltage over a whole wave, then we end up with net zero voltage. So that doesn't really make any sense, does it? If we then use P equals VI, we have zero voltage on average, so we have zero power. But that's not true because we know AC supplies power to everything around the country. So we need something to replace our normal voltage. We need an AC voltage equivalent. So this works for DC, so we need some way of turning AC values into DC. Here we have our V max, also known as V0. In other words, that's the peak voltage that we have there. By the way, if you're asked for peak to peak, then that's what you're going for. You're going for twice the top voltage, but we're just gonna be dealing with V0 for now. Now, when it comes to sinusoidal waves, if you want to find out where the equivalent is, you'd have to flip the bottom half onto the top. You'd have to do some math to try and figure out where the flat line would be for DC to be equivalent. Thankfully, you don't need to know all about that, but I can tell you that it ends up being about there. That's the DC equivalent of voltage and we call this the root mean square voltage or vrms for short 
And the same thing goes for the current as well, because the current is going to be at a max and then a min and then a max. We need to find out the RMS current as well. How do we do that? It's as simple as this. VRMS equals the peak voltage divided by root two. Easy. That is your conversion factor between RMS values and peak values. Same goes for current as well. So combining those two, in order to find out the power given by an AC current, all we have to do is take our VRMS times by our IRMS jobs are given. So that's the only way that you can do any meaningful analysis of AC is by turning the peak voltages and currents into RMS values first. Once you've got your RMS values, you can use any of the equations that we know for circuits as per usual. So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions or if you feel I've missed anything out, then please put it in a comment down below and I'll see you next time.